I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about the American College of Cardiology's expert consensus statement on cardiovascular sequelae of COVID-19. Joining us today is Dr. Sue Fiddler, who is a family doctor and a sports medicine specialist. Welcome, Sue. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for having me. This statement is so important because about 30% of patients after COVID-19 have prolonged symptoms, often called long-haul COVID, also called post-acute sequelae of COVID. Cardiovascular symptoms are common among the symptoms, and they include chest pain, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, and palpitations, and they're a real challenge for us to figure out what to do with. The statement is helpful because it says get some labs, a CBC, a basic metabolic panel, troponin, a C-reactive protein. If they're having cardiovascular symptoms, get an EKG and an echocardiogram. If they're having palpitations, ambulatory rhythm monitoring. I prefer using an Apple Watch or a cardio monitor rather than a halter because we can use it longer term and get that information when a patient is having symptoms. If someone's having shortness of breath, chest imaging, consider a chest x-ray or a chest CT, maybe pulmonary function tests, and consider a 10-minute walk, uh, rather a 10-minute stand test if someone's having lightheadedness in order to look for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS. You have someone stand for 10 minutes after being seated, an increase in pulse rate of 30 or a heart rate of 120 with symptoms then they have POTS. If someone's having chest pain, use the usual way of figuring out whether or not they need a stress test that we always do with a little lower threshold than usual for getting that stress test. If any of the tests are positive, then send someone to a cardiologist to make sure they don't have myocarditis. But Sue, most of the time our testing is negative and we're left with figuring out how to manage their symptoms. Can you go over that management? Absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head, right? We're looking how to manage their symptoms. So one of the big things we see is exercise intolerance. So how do we talk to someone about getting back into exercise? Um, the, the first part is knowing that when someone has exercise intolerance or orthostasis or tachycardia, recumbent exercises are much better for them than standing exercises. So what are recumbent exercises? We've got recumbent bike, we have swimming, we've got rowing, um, but those are better tolerated. So Second, how do they do it? So they're starting small. They're starting five to 10 minutes at a time at a pace that they can be conversational with. Um, and then there's, they're incrementally increasing very slowly too. They may be only adding two minutes per day each week. So again, start slow, go slow, and get them up to tolerance. There's other things we all, we want to think about their salt intake, their water intake. They could try waist high support stockings. Um, all can be helpful. Medication wise, we're really managing symptoms. So with tachycardia, we're going to try beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. Orthostasis has midodrine, flutrocortisone, things that we've used, you know, for those symptoms for a long time. That is so helpful. Let's move on now to return to play. A common thing we're asked in the office is to give advice or sign off on someone returning to exercise or returning to play after COVID. Can you give us some background on this issue? Sure. The evolution of return to play has been something very interesting to watch. Um, and initially, when COVID first came, what we knew is that myocarditis, myocarditis was a concern and people in the hospital were really sick with lots of co complications from their COVID in a cardiovascular way. Um, the initial studies were not great at really giving us a true incidence of myocarditis. You know, the numbers were all over the board from a half percent to upwards of 15 percent. And what we noticed is that the more testing we did in those studies, the more myocarditis we found. And it wasn't always clinically correlated with how someone was feeling. Everyone got testing, whether you had symptoms or not. And over time, we realized that really symptoms should dictate whether someone has testing. And then we decide what to do in terms of figuring all of that out. So what's the current recommendations? So I do think the current recommendations are a little easier to digest. So I think the first thing you look at is, does someone have symptoms from their COVID? So do they have an asymptomatic infection, in which case they wait three days to make sure they don't have symptoms? Do they have a mild COVID infection that has totally resolved or a moderate COVID infection that's totally resolved and they have no symptoms, no chest pain, no trouble breathing, no palpitations, otherwise they're feeling great. 
for those folks, we can give them a graded return to play. And what this means is that they're going to slowly return to play over about seven days and pay attention to how they're feeling. So this starts light. This starts 15 to 20 minutes of very light exercise, um, no lifting when they first start. And then every day they add a little bit more. And by day four or five, they're close to what their regular levels of activity are. But by day six, they can get through what a normal workout would be the whole time paying attention if they have any symptoms. If they develop symptoms, or if you're in a category where you had severe COVID, severe enough to be in the hospital, or you had COVID and you never got to um, full recovery, you still had chest pain, shortness of breath, those folks are considered symptomatic. Those folks need an evaluation. Where do we start? We start with the typical triad testing, EKG, echocardiogram, and a highly sensitive troponin. If all of those tests are normal, those folks can consider going you know, through their return to play. And again, we might need to use some of those measures we just talked about for folks with exercise intolerance or who aren't feeling well. If any of those tests are positive, those folks need more evaluation. And this is where you reach out to your cardiology colleagues. We think about things like cardiac MRI. We think about long-term ambulatory rhythm monitoring. They need an extended evaluation if that initial set of triad testing is abnormal. If we diagnose with someone with a myocarditis, they should not exercise for at least three to six months. And hopefully, as primary care docs, we're managing them with our cardiology colleagues. And so, again, I think it boiled it down to make it a little simpler. In summary, if they have no symptoms, get them slowly back into play. If they have symptoms, they need an evaluation and oftentimes a consult with our cardiology colleagues. Sue, that's such helpful, practical advice. Thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. For Medscape, I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick.